Hey, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. I want to welcome everybody once again to um, another Monday evening um, where I do my live stream Bible studies. Um, if you've been following along, you know we've been tackling various um, chapters from a book I entitled I'm Not a Preacher But God Speaks Through Me um, and so today is going to be another installment Eddie don't don't do that Eddie I always tag you <laughs> don't do that <laughs> but yeah this week is another installment um, and I'm actually putting the um, the scriptures in the chat in case you want to look at them for reference for tonight. I do not wish for this to drag on. Um, just want to push put a couple nuggets out there and go from there. But yeah, <laughs> don't do that. I'm not a preacher. God just deals with me on a different level because I have relationship I think people forget what actual relationship is um, so hello to everybody who is watching hello to everybody who may watch hey dad and mom um, this week's title is you need someone not a sermon um, and we'll get into exactly what the premise and the basis is once we get into this so I'm not going to tarry I'm not going to keep rambling I'm going to go ahead and um <laughs> okay Eddie don't do that um I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and pray us in um so Lord we thank you right now for the time you've given us together God let angel decrease let you increase in me let your word be plain for the hearer and the listener so that those who would come to watch, those who would come to listen, would understand what you have placed in me this day to deliver a word to them. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so today, you don't need a sermon. Um, and we'll get into the basis of what this title is actually about. Um, I just want to read these um, few scriptures. Um, Psalm 71 and 21, um, I usually use the um, Amplified <coughs> version. First, if there's anybody who's watching for the first time, let me just explain. Um, the last couple months, I've been doing chapters out of my up-and-coming book, I'm Not a Preacher, God Speaks Through Me. Um, these chapter titles are unique. They were given to me, um, and then I prayed, I talked to God, and these are titles and chapters that are actually a part of the book. Um, I hope to be releasing it sometime in the fall. We'll see how that goes. But at the end of the day, um, these are just some of the reviews of some of the chapters um, that will be in that book. So with that being said, Psalm 71 and 21. Um, and it reads, May you increase my greatness and turn to comfort me. Overflow with prosperity and the Lord shall again comfort Zion and again choose Jerusalem. And then Isaiah 40 and verses 1 and 2 says, Comfort, oh, oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and call out to her that her time of compulsory service and warfare is finished, that her wickedness has been taken away since her punishment is sufficient, that she has received from the Lord's hand double punishment for all her sins. And so... I'm just going to give you guys, the guys the chapter the way God gave it to me. Um, so there's a great need in the world because the church has lost its power. I'm going to say that again. There is a great need in the world because the church has lost its power. In the Old Testament, the people were required to bring the tenth for the priests and the widows and the poor. Okay. And when the tribe started to deter from the original plans of God, that is when they found they were found in opposition of God and his infinite wisdom. The plight of society is the same. 
okay? We have so many people that are willing to turn a blind eye and a deaf ear to their brothers and sisters in Christ. So, how can you only seek God on behalf of yourself? How? How can you not go after those that are not Christ followers? In John 21 and 17, Jesus says, Simon, son of John, do you love me with a deep personal affection for me as for a close friend? And Peter was grieved that he asked him the third time, do you really love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. How calloused have we gotten that the only thing that the church has to offer the people of God is word? Pause and think about that for a minute. How callous have we gotten that the only thing that the church has to offer the people of God is a word? <clears throat> Sometimes what a person needs is someone and not a sermon. Sometimes the person needs to understand that there are people out there without self-seeking agendas that are genuinely <laughs> concerned for their welfare. They don't need someone to preach to them about how messed up their life is or how many wrong decisions they've made. They need someone to show them the love of God. They need someone to introduce them to a God of second and third and fourth chances. A God who cares about one lost soul that will leave the 99. A God that sent his only son to save a world full of hatred and malice. A God that, closes, that chose them before the foundations of the world. And so churches are closing their doors because people aren't showing up. Pastors are hanging up their robes and hanging themselves. Um, the work of ministry is a daunting task and it's not for the faint of heart. It's not. And people are coming in broken and leaving out all the more broken. <laughs> and that's it. Um, the church only wants to spout religious norms and customs to to them instead of the word of God. And too many churches don't even operate off of what's in the word. Let's just call it what it is. There's some, some churches out here that don't even, I don't even know what book they're in. <laughs> um, and they are going off how grandma did church and how daddy did church. And, but God is raising up a standard. And he said, I need a people that are going to save my sheep. I need a church that's going to go to the people. I need a church that's willing to sup with and dine with the unbeliever. They don't need a sermon. They need someone. And so many individuals that avoid churches say that the people inside of churches are doing worse than they are. <laughs> Out here in the world. And... There was a time when people were scared to bring that nonsense to the house of God. Scared. Petrified. Now, armed gunmen can get into a church undetected because the spirit of the true and living God is not there. Period. Point blank. There are no discerning spirits. There is no power. And the enemy has infiltrated the ranks. It's not about what you are preaching. It's about what you are living. You cannot preach love your brothers and sisters and then walk by someone on the street and not have compassion. You cannot preach love and then spew hatred all over social media. The church has gotten a bad rap because of individuals who are claiming God but do not walk in his grace and mercy. Too many people want titles and not enough want to walk in what those titles represent. The apostles during Jesus' time would walk to various cities preaching and teaching the gospel. And we cannot get professed believers to jump in the car and ride 10 minutes for a service outside of Sunday morning. <laughs> That's it. We cannot get professed believers to volunteer a few hours a week at a homeless shelter or a food pantry. Yet we want God to move in our lives and circumstances. Matthew 25 and 40 says... The king will answer and say to them, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, to the extent that you did it for one of these of mine, even the least of them, you did it for me. 
Would Jesus say, well done, good and faithful servant? Or will he say, depart from me, I knew you not? Going to church is to be the teaching that we need to go out into the world and be the church for the broken, for the lost, for the hurt, and for the non-believer. Many of us are going to be the only representation of Jesus some people will ever see. And so how are you showing up? How are you showing up? Can God's love be seen through you? Can the people that encounter you see the love of Jesus in your life? The people need you. They may not receive a sermon, but they will receive you. Will you give them what they need? Will you bring God to the people? Will you? God is calling for a church of doers. Individuals that are going to go out and witness to lost souls. We can't sit casually anymore and go looking for a word only for ourselves. But we need to be looking for something for others as well. So those that are willing to go to the highways and the byways. Um, those that are going to step outside of the four walls and be the church on two legs. They don't need another sermon, y'all. They need someone. <laughs> a lot of us, you know, think sending somebody to church or inviting them to church is, is you doing your part. And that's so far from the truth because um, you can, a lot of times you can get people to go. All you got to do is tell them you're feeding you can get you can pack the church out but then what are you giving them because they can get the physical food but now what spiritual food are you giving them and then what are you doing after the fact to make sure you nourish that in them y'all this chapter done that's it that's it um simple and plain as that that's it god just god just wants us to get to a place where we're not just giving people scripture and we're not just trying to get them to listen to a sermon and saying oh don't that speak to you looking for something that makes you feel giddy on the inside that's not what it's about but sometimes a person just needs someone i never forget when i was still living in Vaughan, this lady walked by my house regularly regularly and one day i was sitting on the step doing hair i think and she walked up and we began a conversation and um i never forget one day she asked me for a hug and i hugged her and um my then husband was like you hugged her you don't know where she been and i was like guess what i can go in that house and get a shower she might not be able to the point was i was something for her that she needed in that moment and countless times after that that woman came to my house and i prayed for her and i was doing things for her that I would hope somebody would do for me if I was in her circumstances because that's what God has called us to not to be judgmental not to fig try to figure out what she got going on in her life but to simply care enough to say that's my brother or my sister in Christ and I care about her well-being I care about her livelihood and so therefore I can take a couple moments out of my day to just speak life to her I said she just needed someone she didn't need me to throw the Bible down her throat. She didn't need me to preach to her. She just needed me in that moment. And so that was the message for today. Um, I pray you guys were blessed by it. Um, for anybody coming in late um, and watching this on a replay, um, I hope that this spoke to you on some level. It's not a long chapter. I don't intend on these to be long. Um, I like to dialogue and you know this one kind of went by a little faster than the other ones but that's okay they don't always have to be long and lengthy as long as the message gets across that's the goal at the end of the day so um i will catch you guys next monday um i pray you were blessed by this um, and by next sunday um i should have the next chapter title up and ready to go so let's pray and let's go lord we thank you for this lesson that went forth today God, bless those that will watch. Bless those that have watched. God, let their ears be open to what you're communicating with us in this season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys have a blessed evening, and I will catch you guys next Monday.